healthcare professionals held a National Day of Action last week. The group, Canadian Doctors for Refugee Care, was protesting the one-year anniversary of Ottawa's cuts to refugee health care funding. We will not be bystanders refusing to act. Last June, Canada ended or scaled back the interim health care coverage that refugees receive. One year later, health care workers say the cuts are resulting in adverse health outcomes. Refugees may not have a voice, but we do. Vanessa Wright spoke at the Toronto rally on behalf of nurses. The nurse practitioner works at a refugee health clinic in the city. The worst impact I've seen is a woman who was from an African country who made an inland claim, did not get interim federal health, arrived here at 36 weeks pregnant, had extreme hypertension, needed to go to the emergency care in ICU, had emergency C-section. She was fitted, a, she was provided a bill over $5,000. Dr. Philip Berger is a co-founder of Doctors for Refugee Care. He says the federal government has perpetuated several myths to justify the cuts. One is that refugees prior to these cuts received so-called gold-plated health care. That's the diamond-studded propaganda of the federal government. The government also says they receive more than seniors. Not true. Seniors get many more, not less, benefits than refugee claimants ever got. To reverse the cuts, the doctors group launched a charter challenge seeking to have the reforms deemed unconstitutional and illegal. In the meantime, advocates like the medical resident Dr. Alex Cotterella are encouraging their peers to speak up for refugee health care. And I would thirdly encourage them to call up their MPs, call up their ministers and just keep that pressure on.